Robert Delange was born March 15, 1842, and died February 14, 1874, at the age of 31. Professionally, he was a farmer and a politician. He was married and had one daughter. He was the third black American seated in the House of Representatives and the second black American elected by South Carolina to the House of Representatives. Although there are some difference in this opinion, he is considered to be the first non-slave, though some literature states that he was born a slave. He was born the product of a mixed race relationship. His mother was a Haitian free woman of color who worked as a seamstress and his father was a Sephardi Jew who worked as a tailor. His family was part of the mulatto elite and were slave holders. Delange himself was formerly educated. He went to primary school in North Carolina and then to high school in South Carolina. Later, he became a member of a group of Black Americans educated before the Civil War who were mostly artisans and social leaders. The name of the group was the Brown Fellowship Society. During the Civil War, he was employed by the Confederate Navy. After the war, he worked as a Republican in the Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau was an agency set up by the War Department in 1865 to assist formerly enslaved people freed from slavery by the emancipation in obtaining relief, land, jobs, fair treatment, and education, according to dictionary.com. Among African-American politicians of the era, Delarge was comparatively conservative. He advocated mandatory literacy testing for voters, while at the same time, he argued that the government should penalize ex Confederates by retaining their property and disenfranchising them. Delarge was elected a delegate to the South Carolina Constitutional Convention in 1868. The same year, he was elected as a Republican member of the South Carolina House of Representatives until 1870. While in the House of Representatives, for the state of South Carolina, he served as the chairman for the Ways and Means Committee. Then he became the state land commissioner where he did great work for the poor. His tenure though was discredited due to allegations of fraud and illegally diverting funds to his congressional campaign, which was never proven and he was never charged of. Delarge made lots of money as a tailor to the Confederate Navy during the Civil War, but he donated most of his wartime earnings to the Republican Party. Although Delarge donated his money that he earned during his wartime employment. His activities as a tailor gained him favor amongst the white elites who used his tailor services. That plus his desire to interact in the political arena 
allowed for him to be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives March 4th, 1871, where he served until January 24th, 1873. Delarge was unable to complete his full term. His seat was vacated due to election abuses and irregularities. Delarge and Bolden, his Republican opponent, were constantly at odds with one another and performed several actions and events towards one another as a result of a hard-fought election. This, plus the fact that Delarge was constantly at odds with the state Republican Party and rarely defended the corrupt state. and corruption resulting from the placing of improper men in official positions, Delarge declared, these evils have been brought about by the men identified with the race to which the gentleman from New York belongs and not by our race. This was spouted on the floor as he responded to 
a gentleman from New York who suggested that black American politicians were corrupt while Delarge was simply defending the honor of his fellow black politicians. This angered South Carolina Republican leaders and they exacted revenge when he was accused by one of his competitors of stuffing the voting boxes. This eventually led to him being unseated and the seat remained empty until the next election. Delarge returned to the state capital in Columbia and later moved to Charleston after Governor Scott appointed him the magistrate of that city. After leaving Congress, Delarge served as a local magistrate as previously stated. He held this position until he died from tuberculosis in Charleston on February 14, 1874, at the age of 31. As a sign of respect, the city magistrate statewide closed their offices on the day of his funeral. Robert Carlos Delorge. He was a major figure in black history, black politics, and the Republican Party. Please click the like button so that others may find this information. Press the subscribe button if you would like to see more postings like this one. And lastly, post in the comment box what interested you the most about Robert Delarge and his American story.